Salute, General, Iro, Musa, Etiquette. I'm affectionately referred to as General Etiquette, and I've been thinking. I've been thinking about a plethora of things, but today, specifically, I want to talk about the leadership, right? The options that we have, and I really want to just pose some questions right really develop a conversation now i don't i don't endeavor to make my channel political in any way shape or form but because it is my channel and it is my prerogative i do feel like i need to voice something as the elections sort of come about so one of the issues that i've been having is with the options that we seem to always be left with now i won't pretend that I follow the political process tooth and nail and I fine comb my way through all the intricate details, right? But what I do know is that we always seem to come down between the wolf or the wolf in sheep's clothing, right? So for me, I guess the conversation that I wanted to develop was I understand the things that Trump has done. I understand why, especially black people, don't necessarily support Donald Trump. I get it. It's not far-fetched. It's not unfathomable in any way, shape, or form. My curiosity and my semi-frustration as a black man and a man of color is why there's so much adamant support for Joe Biden. And what do I mean by that? Joe Biden was a part of the 94 crime bills, right? At when he was a senator, I believe. The 94 crime bills that was directly correlated to mass incarceration. Now, for those who don't know what mass incarceration is, sort of the overarching umbrella theme and metaphorical concept, although it's very real, but it's the concept that you could wrap your mind around about all the various ways that black men have been targeted and unfairly locked up and or treated by our criminal justice system, right? The penal system, right? Now, anybody who has eyes, right, who's been alive in the last however many years can let you know that black people have been unfairly targeted by law enforcement officials for as long as we can remember, right? And Joe Biden, my curiosity, right, is this adamant support for this gentleman, I'm curious because I believe he was one of the individuals that also called black people super predators, super predators. Now, when we get into arithmetic, right, I've, I was always more of an English guy, my English and history guy myself. But, the, but in terms of arithmetic, I, I find it very difficult to believe that just a few, not, not that long ago, right? This gentleman was referring to us as super predators and we can't even quantify accurately all of the black lives who were destroyed and or affected directly or indirectly by mass incarceration and the 94 crime bills. We That number isn't even quantifiable. We still haven't seen all of the effects with the absent fathers, right? And men growing up without fathers in the home, women growing up without fathers in the home, right? We st we won't be able to accurately put a number around how we've been impacted by some of those decisions. And those weren't decisions made by an 18 year old. It wasn't decisions made by a very, very young man in the prime youth of his political career and aspirations. These decisions were made by a grown man Right, as Biden was was very very grown when he and back in 1994 he he was a, he was a grown man, and what I have trouble with, right? So now we get to the point that I have trouble with the trouble that I find with this is what atone what what atonement has he made for such decisions? Right, people of color are so adamant about supporting Democrats. Now I'm not suggesting you support the other. What I suggest is that we take a step back and look around and truly force these parties to address our issues. What I'm suggesting is not to vote for Donald Trump. I'm suggesting we take a step back as black people and really come together and identify what are the things that we need and remove emotion out of it and logically traverse 
these issues in some way, shape, or form, and then go, who are the people that are speaking to the issues that we're having? Because if Democrats automatically believe they have our vote, they won't address our issues. And if Republicans think it's a non-issue because we won't vote for them anyway, they won't address our issues. And if we essentially have a two-party system in this country where no other party at the current moment really matters as it pertains to the presidential election, then we're between a rock and a hard place, the way I see it. Right. And a lot of people have said, yeah, Joe Biden has worked with people of color. What I see is someone who's worked with people of color and has elevated their status in the process of doing so. Now, I'm not privy to all of his political ambitions and or endeavors. But as I see it and for nationally known and recognizes that this man became vice president and now he's bidding for a position at president. So he has also leveled up. The entire time that he's been engaging people of color and teaming and joining forces with people of color, he's been leveling up. So is that is that really making amends? Like I said, in my mind, it can't even be quantified the amount of lives that were affected by mass incarceration that's still being affected by mass incarceration and will be affected if we don't address um, criminal justice reform. So if we don't take that process seriously, mass incarceration and all the ill effects of it will continue to hinder and plague young black, young black, brown, young black and brown men and women of color disproportionately to everybody else. So my question is, right, not even so much of a question, but whilst, whilst I'm not arguing that we just run and go and vote Republican. By any stretch of the imagination, what I'm saying is I kind of want to know why people are so adamant about supporting a Joe Biden who seems like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Someone who has destroyed countless black lives with no atonement. He has paid no price. He has offered no sincere apologies. Right. What has he done to garner the trust and respect of black people? How has he made amends for mass incarceration and the effects that we'll see? There are people suffering right now because of decisions that he made. Yet we're supposed to automatically be OK with this. So, like I said, you know what we do here. We build community through thought-provoking discourse, right? So I'm not here to tell you how to think or what to believe. I'm just here to have the conversation with you. Please hop up in the comments. Let me know how you feel, right? Let me know if you do trust the Joe Biden and and the reform and the ways and thing the, the ways that you see things can change and elevate our our conditions socially. Because I'm gonna be honest, personally, I care less about the politics of the individual and more about what they plan to do for me and my people. Because at this juncture, we've never seen anybody who has had a genuine interest in our well-being as black people. We've never seen a president and or because, right, even when we have presidents that have done things, they are the president of the entire country. So we also understand Right, that we aren't necessarily going to see things specifically written into law that target and only benefit black people. That's not what I'm suggesting. But what this country and everybody in this country knows is that for the longest time, black people have been done wrong. And there's been no attempt to make amends for that. And Mr. Joe Biden is no different. Mass incarceration, in my opinion, is a million times more destructive than anything that I can think of in recent history that a candidate has done. Being a part of mass incarceration as a black man, it has a, I, I almost have a visceral reaction because it's plagued us that much. It's been that heavy. It's been that much of a burden on our communities. Now, I'm not arguing for people who need to be in jail. Lock them up if that's what that is. But we need reform. 
in our criminal justice system. And like I said, I really just want to know what Joe Biden has done to make black people so adamant about supporting him and why people would argue that we should support him. Right. So like I said, I'm not here to be combative. We not arguing. I don't care to argue and I'm not going to argue with you. But what I will do is, is engage in civil discourse so that, like I said, we could continue to build community through thought provoking discourse. So like I said, man, I don't endeavor to make the channel fully po a political, but it is my prerogative. And I do feel like we need to have these conversations. And this has been something that has been sitting heavy on me for a while. Right. So I really I really want to understand and I really want to unpack this with other individuals. Right. That are that are similarly interested in this situation. Right. What has been done to make amends and why? Why should we trust and what could we actually expect? What is it that we want? What is it that we need? These are just all questions that need to be answered. Like I said, man, when you see me say what's up, but I prefer you salute General. Iro, Musa, etiquette.